Hi, this is James Gorman our Tour Library here with a book review. Today's book are reviewing today The Architect of Sleep by Stephen R. Boyd. This was published by Ace Books and this is from first published in July of 1986. This was an absolutely huge disappointment. I was really uh, hoping to enjoy this book and it, look at this gorgeous cover. Look at this gorgeous cover artwork and then on the back like, look at that. That's great. Unfortunately, this book was, like I said, it was very disappointing. It was very boring, dull, unexciting, and it nearly put me to sleep. I'm not kidding. That, that, uh, pun not intended. Uh, this book was just so boring. I, I couldn't believe, believe it. Uh, it gets off to a really good start, uh, but after the, the, the main character is teleported into this alternate world, it's just when it just, it all goes downhill really fast, and I was like, this sucks. Like, I was expecting this to be a lot better, a lot more in the story, and it's just, it doesn't offer anything, and I got to the halfway mark, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm bored with this book. I was getting tired, and just didn't feel like going on any further with this book, so uh, I'll explain I'll explain my review, why I didn't like this book, and the many problems I have with it, and it just, this is, a, this could have been so much better. Like, it had a great idea, but the offer just basically dropped the ball and failed to to ex, like go exceed my expectations to go anywhere with this book. All right, on to the review. Plot: James Bailey is eating his sandwich when his girlfriend Nicole calls and wants to go see a new Francis Ford Coppola film at the Plaza. He feeds his dog, then calls the 7-Eleven where he works and asks Judy to work a double for him, but she is unable to, and another co-worker won't make it in time. Annoyed, James says he will be there to take his shift at 11 after dropping his girlfriend off. James packs a few things and leaves to do some cave exploring out in the Florida Everglades before going to the show. However, something happens which causes James to get sick and leaves the cave feeling ill. He reaches his Ford Maverick, planning to cancel both his date and call in sick for work when he suddenly notices more animals than usual. He continues to explore more of the land around him, feeling he's in a different place, then sees a man fishing by the river, but as James gets a closer look, he stops when he realizes the man isn't human, it's a raccoon fishing. As James moves closer to get a better look, he startles it, causing it to fall off the tree and drop into the water. At the same time, he slips on mud and nearly gets bitten by a banana spider. James tries to give the raccoon its fishing rod back as it makes grunts along with other noises. He tries speaking with it, but it doesn't understand what he is saying. He attempts to leave it, but the raccoon knocks him down and ties up his arms against a tree as it searches through his backpack as it takes anything it thinks it's useful. James is able to call the raccoon over as it's trying to start a fire and unties him. James uses the matches to light a fire and discovers the raccoon is a female. They eat birds the raccoon caught earlier that day. His, he names their truck after his friend Paul's raccoon he kept in his apartment while he was at college. As they travel further together, Truck teaches James how to communicate through sign language along with hunting. Later on, they reach a road and they are greeted by a cart being pulled by two llamas as the driver is a raccoon. They hop on and go to the town of Wait No More. Over time, James gets better with the sign language as he and Truck begin to understand each other more. Both Truck and other raccoons call James an ape or pet as they never seen a human before. She takes James to the town's festival as the two enjoy themselves and spend a night at a hotel. While James is able to impress the townspeople by doing tricks and winning in a llama race against the mayor, however, James wishes to return back to his world and Truck agrees to help him. But it will not be an easy journey as the two will face many challenges while bonding closer to each other. The Architect of Sleep is a slow, dull, boring, and unexciting adventure filled with nothing interesting. The first few pages get off to a good start, but once the main character has entered this alternate world, nothing much really happens after that. None of the aphromorphic raccoons speak English as they can only communicate through sign language as I felt this was very annoying to read along with the limited conversations James could have with Truck and other cr characters. If only they could have spoken English, it would have made reading the dialogue better. I also dislike how none of the raccoon characters have any names as the main character just calls them whatever he wants to and doesn't even ask them what their names are, to which the, racco the raccoons just go along with it, nor do they ever call James by his name. The offer doesn't explain much more with the story, and I was really bored of having to read parts of James and Truck going out to hunt, fish, cap, sleep, return to town, and repeat the process over and over again till the main character wants to return home. But even after that, the pacing was so slow it nearly put me to sleep. 
character dialogue was not good, especially with the raccoons characters, as I expected more from the other characters. Lastly, this novel doesn't really have much of a plot, as the author spends way too much time on the daily life between the two characters, and only adds a little bit of action before going back to the same old thing. And the author doesn't really go into much detail on how this alternate world works. I felt this story could have been so much better if the author fleshed out the characters, added better story elements that would have made it a better plot and bigger action set pieces, adding more elements of fantasy or science fiction t to it, along with explaining more of this alternate world, and if the aphromorphic characters were speaking English, it would have made this a lot easier to get through. Overall, I don't recommend The Architect of Sleep. It's a boring novel that isn't worth wasting your time with, as I'm sure you can find better fantasy or science fiction novels with characters going into other worlds beyond theirs than this one. And that is it for the book review today. As I said earlier, I was just really disappointed with this book. I expected so much more from The Architect of Sleep. I was expecting like this big adventure, uh, lots of um, anthropomorphic characters that the main character would interact with, and a whole bunch of other things. I didn't get any of that. All I got was basically this guy gets teleported to um, this strange world and he just goes along with it. Like, after, when he tries to leave the first time and then when, when, when the raccoon character lets him go, he doesn't even bother returning to his car. He decides, I'm going to stick with this character and see what's going on. Like, that's more important than trying to get back to his actual world. It would have been better if he, if he tried that but couldn't get back and it, it ends up having, like, you know, having to rescue the character or the character comes back and then... They kind of um, come to like agree with each other, like understand, like uh, like understand with each other. Then they go on their way. That would have been better. Um, and the the whole sign language thing was a, just really annoying to read because in the book they have um, these very limited conversations, and there's these big spaces in, in 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 the pages. So the character says a word, but then there's like this big space and. You know there's a word that's supposed to go there, but because of the, the language barrier that the, the main character is having with the uh, truck and the other um, raccoon characters, the, it, it, it makes communication very difficult to understand each other. And even in the book, that he's constantly having to learn more words through sign language. It was just so annoying. I thought, have the characters talk English. Like, is it that hard to do? Hell, in Planet of the Apes, um, the, the, all the apes and primates and monkey characters they have their own language which the main character learns to to uh, learns to speak that language so you can understand them and even teaches the um, the one um primate character how to speak french it makes it that made it so much easier to like for, for the characters to communicate with each other this was the opposite it's just sign language which is it's just not interesting to read it made it very uh boring and uh, just not fun and uh, what what else with this book? Um, hmm. Oh, and um, I really disliked how the author just goes into this like daily life between the two characters, James Bentley and Truck, which that that isn't a raccoon's real name. It's what the main character decides to call her after uh, naming her after a pet raccoon that his friend had. If I ask her what this character's name is, don't just I'm going to call you Truck to, uh, because I I can't be bothered to ask what your name is. It oh I really hated that and. Later on, there's this other raccoon that joins them, and he calls him Doc Holiday rather than asking his name. Again, this is just annoying. Ugh. And, and yes, and the daily life thing is just, it was so boring because the book just goes on and on with the daily life between these two characters, and it was so, it was so uninteresting to read. Like, they got up, had breakfast, went out hunting, went fishing, came back to town, um, sold some stuff to make some money went home to bed and then just it repeats the process like over and over again I'm like I was really bored the author doesn't also explain much more detail of the town and I felt no, wait no more was a really terrible name fight this is the best thing you can call this town you can't come up with something more creative and, or something um the main character does throw in some references to other pop, like uh, pop culture like films and books I didn't mind that um I didn't mind. I didn't mind that. It wasn't like you know, like overdoing it. Um, but oh man, I was really bored. And then towards the middle of the book, where it finally starts going somewhere, it was just. It still wasn't interesting. And again, the author just doesn't really explain much of this world. And it's like I, I was like, what is going on? Like the, 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 on the story, I'm. Oh, and. 
the, the, the story goes between uh, the two characters, James Bentley and Truck. And when it goes to Truck, it, she constantly keeps saying that, that, that Bentley is the, the architect of sleep and he's, like, important to their world or something. Like, what is this architect of sleep? Like, it's... I was really getting for every time the truck brings this um, thing up and she won't explain what it is and I'm reading more and more through the book and it's it, it's not answering the questions and there's hardly any anything anything in this book like there's no like um, action set pieces um, scenery it's just the um, James's house or apartment wherever he lives in it, it's it, again it was not the book doesn't uh, specific Specify what he lives where he where he lives in. Uh, only that he lives in Florida. Uh, there is the town, and there's all this like open grass field, and I think it does mention a forest at one point in the book. But that's it. There's hardly anything in this book. I'm like I'm bored. There's like it's the the whole entire time. It's this whole world is featureless. There's nothing interesting. And at one point in the story, the characters are attacked by uh, wild dogs. Um, and then uh, the, the 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 other raccoon character gets injured, so they have to go and help him. And then they're then uh, attacked by a bunch of bandit raccoons with like they're wearing leather and they got these claw arms. I'm like, this is the best you can add to the story to make it interesting. I'm bored. Like, come on, throw in some other anthropomorphic characters or something else to make it interesting. I'm just oh, I was so bored, and I said I'm done with this book. It just it failed to excite me, interest me, or, 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 or bring anything interesting. It just bored me, and who said that? There's a... There's a... Here, here it is. Um, Robin McKennedy, uh, author of The Hero and the Crown, called it, Boy, second novel is a page-turner. Furthermore, it's a good page-turner. I completely disagree. This is not... This is not a page-turner. This is just a book that will literally put you to sleep because of how boring it is. Uh, and as for the whole furry theme, he does actually say the word furry twice. So technically, it is a furry book because that's what you're calling these raccoon people furries. So it does count. Um, and that sequel, hmm, would that sequel have uh, made up for this book? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a good thing he didn't finish. Uh, didn't end up finishing or not? I, I don't know because this book is so goddamn boring. I don't even want to read more more of it. It. Uh, I could probably find better books with characters being teleport to alternate worlds and they find aphromorphic characters to interact with and do things and stuff that make more interesting stuff than this one. Alright. Now that I'm done with that book, I will then move on to my next book and I will try to get a review before, before this uh, month is over, if possible. My next book, Red Eye by Richard Allen. I'm hoping this book will be a lot better than this one. And I already got a bunch of books picked up for next year and some other stuff I'm planning to read in, in the new year as well. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to Octora Library, the YouTube channel, and the Facebook group of the same name, a place to post, share review, a place you can post and share review fiction. Until then, I'll catch you later.